I'd now like to introduce John Weeks. Professor John Weeks uh, was a professor at SOAS University. He's the author of many books on macroeconomics. He's a member of the PEF Council and the coordinator of the council. John Weeks, I'd like you to give me your initial reaction to the 2020 budget. Well, uh, thank you very much uh, for uh, asking me to comment. It seemed to, be get, to begin with, there were the three points to make. Uh, uh, for those people who uh, watched yesterday or, or read the text, these will be familiar. First of all, there is a uh, net, it appears there'll be a, a net fiscal stimulus, if indeed it's net spending of about 30 billion. That is quite substantial. It represents 3.6% increase on the um, uh, annualized uh, spending, which through January was a uh, uh, 833 billion, so uh, 30 billion is a, a less than 4% increase, but more than three, that's quite a substantial increase. If you put that in the context of the, of the economy, for the economy as a whole, it's slightly less than, <clears throat> it's about 1.6, 1.7% increase uh, for the economy as a whole. So that is uh, not uh, one uh, commentator called it eye-watering. I wouldn't say it's eye-watering. It's better than cuts. It's substantially better than cuts. Uh, in that context, it may well be that the decision to make that uh, 30 million, 30 billion uh, increase will lead to uh, uh, breaching the uh, conservatives' uh, pledge in the manifesto to uh, uh, cover um, uh, current uh, expenditure of taxation, a pledge also made by labor, by the way. Uh, if so, that requires changing the fiscal rules, and the chancellor explicitly said he's going to review those rules. And that is a good thing. I think uh, that, I think it weakens the, uh, the Treasury for generations. The Treasury has played the role of sort of the uh, built-in austerity institution. And weakening uh, the Treasury is a good thing. And then overall, I mean, th those two items taken together mean that if we are at the end of the austerity epoch in terms of ideology, uh, we'll have to remain to see, or we'll have to wait and see how much the stimulus actually is, but certainly the ideological rhetoric and uh, justification of we have to, you know, um, uh, repair the roof and the sun shines, all of those cliches from Osborne and uh, Hammond, they are now uh, of the past. And that is a good thing for a progressive government of the future. In this budget, it seems that the government has performed a massive U-turn and now says that it can borrow and spend uh, as much as it needs to without limit because we have an emergency such as the coronavirus emergency. That is a, uh, the obvious uh, uh, implication. I mean, there, there is no other uh, uh, spin you, uh, you can put on it. I mean, uh, um, the government will say, well, we're doing it now because before we couldn't. Well, that's, uh, that's not true. That's, uh, uh, you, you can't make that argument. The, uh, they have no more uh, fiscal space now than they did before because fiscal space should not be thought of in terms of the size of the deficit or if you're running a surplus, the, the balance, it should be thought of in the, how much it costs to fund it and how much it costs to fund a, uh, uh, a deficit or uh, the uh, uh, fund uh, service, the, uh, uh, the public debt is determined by the interest rate and the interest rate has been low for 10 years and so it's just as easy to, um, uh, to fund uh, that uh, uh, stimulus now as it was, uh, or it was just as easy 10 years ago as it, as it is now. And so it is, this is a U-turn, and it is an implicit acceptance of what before was not necessary. Austerity has caused massive hardship to poor and vulnerable people. They've been made insecure, their mental health has suffered, uh, people have died, uh, life expectation has reduced, there have been suicides. Do you think that the government should apologise to people who have suffered through austerity? It certainly does. I mean, the, um, 
I think it's hard for um, many of us to appreciate uh, actually how bad things have been. Uh, uh, I have a good friend. Uh, he has, uh, I regret to say, a, a disabled child. Uh, the, in uh, 2010, as a result of policies taken by labor governments and supported by conservative governments, there were facilities for that child to uh, go to special schools and to uh, stay overnight and uh, uh, with other children with, uh, with, uh, uh, with problems and so on. Most of that is now gone. And, <clears throat> and of course, the, the, the people who are on universal credit, they are suffering every day. Uh, I, uh, again, I have a friend who um, uh, falls into that category, and uh, <coughs> I won't <coughs> go into the details of it, but it is worse than you can imagine. Yes, they, sh they should apologize, they should compensate. That is not going to happen, <coughs> but I think now it is for the opposition. That would be Labour, also the uh, Scottish Nationalists, the, uh, uh, the Liberal De Democrats, the Greens, to say, you caused all this difficulty, now you are saying, in effect, that it wasn't necessary and we're going to hold you to account. Uh, the Guardian today says that we're all Keynesians now. Uh, what does that mean and is it true? <laughs> no, I do not. Um, first of all, I think there's some considerable confusion about what a Keynesian is. Um, the, uh, the Guardian, like many people, uh, seem to think that Keynesianism is deficit spending, uh, while Keynes certainly felt that there were times when um, the government should step in. Primarily, the, uh, the idea was that the government should step in when the private sector is weak. So when, public, uh, when private investment and exports are weak, then the government has to compensate. However, Keynes was much more than that. Uh, I would say fundamentally Keynes recognized that the private economy tends to be unstable and requires continuous interventions of one type or another, not just through spending but through regulation, through a whole range of things in order to prevent us from having continual private sector shocks that undermine the economy. Uh, in that sense, this government certainly is not uh, Keynesian, but I, we, those of us who have been urging a stimulus, which, for example, PEF has been doing for <coughs> for years now, um, the, uh, those should uh, c congratulate the government on doing so. It, it's not sufficient. There needs to be more. Uh, say the the chancellor said he's la leaving open the possibility of there being more. We should uh, uh, encourage encourage that while recognizing that it's come awfully late. The government has adopted spending plans of a scale and a purpose which are quite like the spending plans proposed by Labour last year and in the run-up to the election. What do you have to say about that? It is, and it's also, I, I thought it was rather um, um, moldy of uh, uh, the Chancellor to make that lame joke that everybody thinks is so funny about John McDonald's uh, uh, <coughs> shadow chancellors. Uh, referring to his uh, uh, book on, uh, you know, uh, sort of public finance for the many, not for the, not for the few, uh, as uh, fiction. First of all, the country is in a very difficult moment. It is time for, in as far as is feasible, the different parties to pull together. And therefore, it is, I think, um, incumbent upon the Chancellor uh, not to uh, uh, provoke uh, 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 the opposition not to make snide jokes. Also, uh, I mean, what he's accusing of being fiction is exactly what he's doing. Only it's, it's smaller, it's smaller than what, well, it, probably it's hard to know, make a strict comparison, because we don't have all the information, but the chance is proposing a $175 billion increase in infrastructure spending. Labor was proposing more, uh, more than that, but still in the, they were in the same uh, ballpark. So the idea, it, what he should say, well, he's never going to say we're, we're following what Labor suggested, but he doesn't necessarily have to uh, make um, uh, inappropriate uh, jokes about it. I'd like to ask you about fiscal rules. Now, yesterday, the government 
said that it was abandoning the current fiscal rule and would let us know in a few months' time what it wants to replace it with. Do you think that we need fiscal rules? And if so, what do you think the fiscal rules should say? Uh, I do not think that there should be a fiscal rule. And if by that is meant a some type of numerical or um, uh, strict guideline, I might say the strictest fiscal rule would be you have to balance the budget within, you know, a year or something like that, uh, some time period. Uh, weaker version, which both the uh, conservatives and labor adopted, is to say we're going to cover day-to-day -day expenditure. Uh, and so our rule will be uh, the, there is an investment budget, and then there's all the rest, the current expenditure, and we will cover current expenditure with taxation. Uh, I think that is unnecessary, too. Uh, there's a technical reason uh, for that. Namely, if um, people think about it for a moment, say you're going to have a stimulus, how are you going to uh, 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 bring about a stimulus? Because you have to be a bit careful if your stimulus is uh, well designed, it may have the effect of pushing the economy very close to uh, its potential. And if uh, the private sector responds with uh, greater vigor than you anticipated, which of course we all hope it does, then you could have uh, inflationary pressures, in which case you're going to have to back off with your, um, uh, 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 at least part of your uh, uh, um, uh, stimulus. Now, you, don't, you would never do that with uh, uh, public investment. You, you don't want to stop a project in the middle of it just because you have, it, uh, have inflationary pressures. But So it would be things such as um, an uh, increase in um, uh, uh, unemployment payments, uh, uh, an, an increase in the number of school teachers, nurses, and so on. And you, so you would be able to bring that, uh, bring that to an end because of in, inflationary pressures, because there was a tight labor market. Now, um, in order to do that, you have to do it through a, a, a current expenditure. So the tying yourself to a rule that says you're going to cover current expenditure by taxation, in effect, very much limits the extent to which you're flexible with regard to your, your budget. Uh, your, your, uh, the expansionary part of your budget. Now, there are people that say, well, if you don't have fiscal rule at all, the government's just going to do irresponsible things and, uh, you know, do bad, ex unwise expenditures and so on. There's a general point and a specific point. The general point is that we elect governments to act on our behalf. And the Governments change, circumstances change, and we need to have faith that they will act appropriately. Setting fiscal rules basically says we must limit the extent to which the public can determine what the government does. That the public may be all for a large stimulus because of the uh, coronavirus or uh, other uh, uh, you know, uh, Brexit, which is affecting the economy. But no matter what the electorate says, we have to have limits to spending. I think to the extent there is a, a, a fiscal rule, it's more fiscal guideline. And that is expenditure, taxation should be continuously monitored in order to ensure that we aren't slipping into unemployment and we aren't pressing against inflationary pressures. And that should be the fiscal guideline that takes us through uh, the uh, determining the budget and managing the budget. It seems that the influence of the Treasury on economic policy is now to be diminished because Downing Street appears to have taken control of the Chancellor. Is that a good thing? Do you think that in the past the Treasury had too much influence and it was too cautious? Well, I hope it is, because I think it is a good thing. Uh, <coughs> some of uh, <coughs> people who are older of my generation or uh, your generation um, will recall that in the 1960s, Harold Wilson sought to uh, weaken the Treasury, created the um, 
uh, ministry, I believe it was called Ministry of Economic Affairs. Affairs. Yeah, and uh, uh, he he unfortunately chose someone who George Brown, George Brown an unwise choice to run it uh, because he was uh, ineffective in doing so, and uh, the uh, and the, the Treasury very much uh, reacted against that, and uh, the uh, subsequent governments backed off of it. The Treasury has traditionally played the role of keeping an eye on the government to be sure it acts responsibly. And I think that that is not an appropriate role. The, uh, the, after all, the Chancellor is appointed by the Prime Minister. I'd also point out that this is rather unusual. If you go to the United States, the uh, uh, the Treasury, um, uh, the, the Secretary of the Treasury, is an important uh, person, but no more important than some other members of, uh, of the Cabinet. And he certainly does not have, or she, does not have veto power over government actions. So I think it's a positive thing. I think that uh, the opposition should um, uh, uh, encourage it. Uh, the, not give the uh, uh, the Tory government a, uh, a blank check, but should encourage this as a move, which in the long run will help a Labour government when it comes to power. Okay, now some people will say that the Chancellor flunked the budget yesterday in relation to the climate emergency. Do you agree that much more should have been done in this budget to deal with the consequences of climate change? I think that that's true. I think um, the um, uh, I, one of our fellow council members, uh, uh, Richard Murphy, uh, uh, in his blog, which I recommend everyone, uh, has um, said that the um, spending on the environment in the budget is woefully inadequate. It's it's in the millions, and it should be in the billions. I think that's true. Uh, I, I regret to say that it was probably never realistic to expect the government to act on, uh, uh, on, on climate change. And that is something now that um, uh, uh, progressives, and I think uh, uh, PEF included, uh, should think seriously about making a, a focus where, where before we were pressing very hard for a uh, stimulus. We have won that battle, and now I think it's important to, to push for a uh, uh, environmental uh, budget and uh, build a uh, coalition around that. So in fact, they could have spent and borrowed without limit in 2010 because we had an emergency then, which was the aftermath of the global financial crisis. That's right. That is correct. We. Uh, we, we had a, there, there are different times of crisis, plagues, wars, depressions. You should act to do something about them. And we could have acted before and we didn't. Well, Gordon Brown began it, but then the uh, uh, Osborne Cameron government canceled uh, Gordon Brown's uh, good work. Does the budget mean that austerity is a failed doctrine and that the economic arguments against austerity have now been won? That is correct. Uh, 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 Jeremy Corbyn, the outgoing uh, leader of the Labour Party, had said uh, uh, after the, uh, his election defeat that uh, uh, we won much of the argument, and he was ridiculed for that. He was right. Uh, the, with regard to uh, fiscal policy, uh, Labour, the Greens, the, uh, uh, won, the, uh, uh, won the argument. It looks like the arguments against austerity have been won, but I'm not sure if we've seen the end of austerity. For example, I didn't see yesterday any additional spending for local authorities, for schools, for social housing. So doesn't that mean that austerity carries on in those areas? I think that um, if we think back, the two big, uh, the two areas that took the most cuts uh, over the last 10 years were um, public investment and uh, local authorities. And uh, uh, the Chancellor has, uh, uh, to the extent, corrected the first, but done very little, apparently, about the second. Uh, the only uh, reference to possible uh, 
correction of the cuts or replacement of the cuts for local authorities was a rather small 300 million expenditure for vulnerable groups. That's nothing close. I mean, the cuts to local authorities are in billions. So that is something that I think that we should be pressing for along with a uh, uh, envir environmental budget. Uh, housing, of course, uh, is um, woefully uh, behind schedule. Uh, and needs to be uh, acted upon. So this budget was a step in the right direction. It helps the arguments, and well, it shows the, the government in effect has accepted uh, uh, the arguments of uh, progressives and Keynesians. However, we have a long way to go. Thank you very much, John Wicks, for your contributions on the 2020 budget.